Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Fox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and make this video um, because I have found another option for some more defensive layers for the Righteous Fire character. It's a little bit uh, big brain to get it set up, but uh, Twitch chat helped me set it up and it works out pretty well. So essentially, um, I have now spec'd two points into an Endurance Charge. Basically, because four endurance charges is 16% physical mitigation, which is as strong as your basalt flask before uh, quality, which is pretty, or flask effect, which is pretty good. Um, the tree is pretty much exactly the same as before. The only thing I've done different is I have crafted some better gear. So I do have a blue pearl amulet now uh, that you guys saw in the last video. We ended up crafting this bad boy. It's pretty nice. Uh, it does allocate revelry for us, which is over here, uh, which I'm really enjoying at the moment. And then I did also craft this belt. Um, this was an awesome belt. It ended up having like one ES roll. We removed the ES with Harvest. And then I forgot who I put in Betrayal, but they allowed me to basically veil a property and then I got Flask Effect, so that's pretty good. But the automation I wanted to show you guys today is this. So I'm sure some of you guys know about the uh, numpad trick, but I'm gonna show you if you do not know. So basically, here is our T12 map that we're going to put in. We're going to hope that it doesn't get ghosted by uh, our fucking, uh, what's her name over here, Navali, since I do have a prophecy for that. Please don't be ghosted! Okay, she's ghosted. Well, anyway, I have put Enduring Cry on my left click, and I have swapped it with Smoke Mine, where you guys saw my gloves before. So it's now Infernal Cry, Urgent Orders, Enduring Cry, and Second Wind. Now, the main reason for Enduring Cry is really just the Endurance Charge generation that I want because the physical mitigation really goes a long way with this build. Um, the life regen is really nice, but it's very inconsistent, and it will mimic essentially what Indigon will do for you if you are curious. So by putting Enduring Cry on left click, now with the new change, you actually don't even need to be next to monsters to get Endurance Charges. So this will kind of hick up the build a little bit and make it feel weird. But since you're playing RF anyway, I mean, you have a Ring of Fire, so like, it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. Like, you may have some deaths on boss fights because maybe your character hiccuped for a second to do it, in which case, on a boss fight, you can just manually cast it if you need to. So for the numpad trick, uh, I'm now using Arcane Cloak that you can see here. So I'm just simply gonna press numpad five. As you can tell, it doesn't work because my numpad's not on. So turn numlock on, hold down your numpad. So numpad five, then hit numlock. And now, with no hands, I promise, no auto hotkey script, It'll automatic or automate automate itself. So now I have the guard going by itself and the enduring cry by itself. I have swapped over to Arcane Cloak mainly because we now have a level 18 Arcane Surge and we have the Mono Recovery on our Redeemer Belt, which really kind of synergizes super nicely. And you'll see basically how our mono works. The Arcane Cloak is up to like 3,700 damage right now, which is literally our HP pool. Here we go. of Exile Beast. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thanks for that 25-month reset. What the hell? That was a long-ass smoke, my TP. All right. That's nothing, right? Yeah, that's nothing. I'm actually thinking I probably want to remove the second wind support from the, inf the uh, Enduring Cry because I don't really need to fucking have cooldown reduction since it has 100% uptime. But I still want the cast speed on it or not the cast speed, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, you know what I mean, the cast speed from the other node. So I'm probably gonna three link my gloves. Actually, I don't know how I would do that. We'll worry about that another time. It's not too big of a deal. I don't mind the inconsistent hiccup because it's an enduring cry, which is really nice. Ooh, Caldera.
pick up there. Oh my. Oh, what is going on right now, dude? I can barely move. I'm like completely frozen. Gee, gee, please. Oh, there's her ghosted form. Can I tank this? I'm very scared. I'm very scared. Please, hi Piety, relax! Oh god, not again. Chill! Please! Peter! Okay. Not too bad, boys. Ghosted Piety's not fair, man, okay? That's like... That's a lot to deal with right now, okay? This build's not like... Hyper Giga Mega Tanky. I mean, it will be, but, you know. Did we ever find the seeds here? Oh, Shabi. Oh, yeah, there she is. Okay, well, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. So, I'm really liking it. I hope that this automation does help you guys a bit if you have been struggling in red tier maps. Um, definitely helps a lot, especially since I don't have a Cloak of Defiance yet, or an Indigon, or even an Adziri's Foible. So I'm trying to basically get my effective life as high as possible without really hindering my gameplay too much and making things really, really awkward. Anyway, take care. Have a wonderful time. Remember, if you guys enjoyed the build, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can always catch me live streaming at twitch.tv slash box. Take care, everybody.